G'day, g'day, and welcome to another episode of Kiwi Car Life. And today we're going to be reviewing this 1998 MGF in none other than the Sunny Kaikoura. In terms of exterior styling, I reckon part of the appeal of these cars, especially in the UK where they sold very well, is the fact that it's actually a really cute looking little car. The sort of round headlights at the front and the little grille and the short little stubby bonnet and then of course the convertible top and then the long back end housing the little 1.8 litre engine back there means that it's actually a really cool looking little car and I imagine there are a lot of people who would have bought this car for its looks. The interior of the MGF is um small to say the least although that said for those wondering I am about six feet tall and my friend who has bought this car that we're driving back to Wellington is probably about six foot four and quite a bit bigger than me and he just fits but that said the build quality is okay it's a British car from the late 90s the vents the uh, air conditioning sort of stuff down here and a lot of these other buttons the steering wheel a lot of the plastics that are used here on the inside it's very cheap very generic it doesn't really feel all that special i suppose would be my only complaint but the good things about it is that the gauges are really nice and easy to read the steering wheel is really small it has great steering feel the pedal box is placed well it's very easy to heel tow the transmission doesn't feel the best but it's got a manual and it's got relatively short gears which makes it really really fun to drive the seats are a nice squashy comfortable seat that does hold you in reasonably well it's certainly not the best out there but it's not too bad so in general it's not bad especially for a 1998 and especially for a three thousand dollar car but certainly compared with some more modern convertibles like for instance the Z4 or newer MX-5s and so on they're definitely a lot nicer on the inside. The engine fitted to the MGF is a 1.8 litre Rover K-Series engine it makes 107 kilowatt and 174 newton meters it's naturally mid-engine so there's not really a whole lot to see under here and it's paired up with a five-speed manual and is rear wheel drive. And the other interesting thing about this is that because it is a VVC model or which stands for variable valve control it has some quite interesting engine technology which you really wouldn't expect for a 90s rover product of all things at least to the extent of my knowledge and i'm not terribly expert on these engines but what i believe it does is it adjusts valve duration think of it as, as it kind of as the valve opens it slows down the cam movement and then speeds up at the top and then slows down so what it means is that it's able to open the valves for longer at certain rpm periods helping to make more torque so it's quite an interesting sort of engine technology that other manufacturers have also done like Honda and Toyota and many others with variable valve timing but this one where it's able to adjust valve duration is kind of a little bit more unique. Driving the MGF. This is a screamer of a little engine eh? Mm -hmm. Right to just over 7,000 but the first thing that you will really notice when you drive this car is man it is loud there's <laughs> an insane amount of wind noise and admittedly i don't think we have the top quite on properly well it seemed to get a bit better there but there is a lot of wind noise a lot of road noise it is not a refined experience but you don't buy a car like this for a refined experience you buy it because it's fun and that it very much is for three thousand dollars or even less if it's got a few issues you can get one of these things and it's hard to think of a car that's any better it's not the fastest thing ever but it's got a really fun lively engine it revs right out to just over seven thousand rpm makes power right to the top the car sort of moves around a bit on the road you can feel it really sort of darting from one side to the other and so what it means is that you can really pummel into a corner and the car is just flat it's really easy to wear match downshifts and it gets up and goes but admittedly while at motorway speeds as you would have heard it is really loud now you slow it down to 50 it's not actually that bad Handling is really, really good, and this is the kind of road that suits this car. Oh, the steering is so heavy without the power steering, but at least it's direct. It's so fun through these corners. Oh, I got the back end out a little bit there. Oh, this is good fun. This is just a really, really good fun car. Never would have guessed that a $3,000 British convertible was this fun to drive. 
it sounds good, it's really direct, it's obviously not that fast, but it's fast enough where you can have a bit of fun. And just overall, you know, if you can live with the slightly generic and not terribly well built interior and the lack of room inside, and arguably the lack of comfort, the seats aren't really the most comfortable. Overall, especially for the price you can pick these things up for, it's actually a really, really good car. So there we go, thanks very much for watching this episode of QB Car Life, and if you want to see the only other two mid-engine cars that I've reviewed, then click over here to see me taking a look at a 2ZZ swapped Toyota MRS. And if you want to see me reviewing an Audi R8, which I know is right on the other end of the spectrum, but hey, it's mid-engine, then click over here, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.